What does denying yourself mean to you? So, you know, how, how does that, what does that mean to you, Dave? Speak from your own experience of denying yourself and following Christ in that particular way. And then, of course, what is the connection between comfort and, you know, self-denial? Mm, mm. Well, I think the, the, the way Jesus frames denying yourself is really about, he, he links it directly to taking up your cross. So he's talking about a road of, of suffering, ultimately of crucifixion. And I think that the headline of it all is, is actually, we find it um, hours in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus says, uh, not my will, but yours. And he submits himself to the will of the Father, even of crucifixion. Yeah. And I think this is the attitude of self-denial. is not my will, but yours, Lord. So, mm. you know, when it comes to, for example, you know, as I think I shared with you, Ebo, going out on Tuesday, there are still days. Yeah, I still, when I went to look the day before, walked around Basingstoke, you know, in my flesh, do I really feel like I want to set up a banner here in a busy place that's going to potentially, you know, offend people and it's just, Culturally, it feels inappropriate, the political correctness, you know, um, sort of culture saying this is not what you do. I don't feel like doing that. It's not, that's not something natural to my flesh. Even now, I've done it literally hundreds probably of times. It's, it's still not natural to my flesh uh, to want to do that. When people are just walking around having their coffee, they're, they're perfectly happy. But I have to remind myself of the truth before God of what's going on. They might be happy, but that's not the point. What about these babies? What about three babies every day being violently killed am, am i going to put you know the political correctness of people having their coffee above the justice of human lives being taken the injustice of these lives being taken and so it's about submitting ourselves i think god's will whatever it takes you know whatever the cost might be and that sometimes that cost will be greater sometimes it will be lesser but it's it the headline is father your will be done not mine and and our expectation should be that will therefore mean at times great suffering, being hated, and and maybe one day physically, yes, maybe our lives will be taken from us. We, we, that should be considered quite normal for the Christian. You know, biblically, most of the Bible was written by people who were killed. For you know, I say most certainly a, a lot of it, but most of the New Testament at least written by people who were killed, um, and probably most. Probably the majority you think about all the prophets you know i mean it's like pretty much in the job description of a prophet that, you know it ends with execution so it should be normal to us this should be the norm that it means dying to the world it means dying to comfort to self-reliance yeah. it, it we, we we're not about building a nice little kind of retirement package here on earth that's just not what we're here for yeah. um and so that's i think that's the attitude that we should that we should have and and the glorious grace of that is that when we walk the path of Christ and this and, and speaking more personally, this is my experience that when I first started doing this work on the streets about five years ago now. I was so grateful to feel myself growing closer to Christ, because for the first time, I felt as though I was experiencing so much of what I read. Yeah. You know, it, it really niggled yeah. me in my teenage years. I read lots in the Bible about suffering for being a Christian. But was I suffering? To be honest, no, not, not in the slightest. So I was like, it, something always felt wrong there. My experience yeah. was not matching up to what I read. Yeah. And then one day yeah. it began to. And I, yeah. I began to experience what I already believed um, and to know what it was to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Yeah. And I don't want to be flipping about this or or. or trivialize it but 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 there's a, a deep um there's a deep spiritual sense in which i enjoyed that i enjoyed growing closer to christ in that yeah. sharing in his sufferings as paul says in philippians i want to know the power of christ i want to have fellowship with him in his sufferings becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain to the resurrection of the dead to actually experience that is a joy yeah. Um, and it just moves us out of the sort of complacency and the superficiality that so often defines uh, our Western Christianity. So, so it to me, it's about following more closely the way of Christ, um, which is a grace. It's a gift. This is not a chore. It may not be easy, but um, there is nothing that compares to knowing Christ and being um, and being found in Him. There's just nothing better than that. And 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 the only way 
biblically that we can grow close to Christ is to walk the path he walked and to share in those sufferings. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think, I think um, this kind of call is um, something the Spirit has been trying to shape the church into, but we've been unwilling because I think that our personal comforts seems to uh, overwhelmingly influence us than laying them aside. And of course, you made a very crucial point that you read the Bible and almost everybody who wrote scripture, who God used to inscribe, you know, uh, or God used within the narrative of scripture, uh, they, they gave their life um, up. And, and again, I think that um, we, we've been convinced otherwise, um, being a Ghanaian living here, I think that we have the, you know, thank God for relative comfortability here and all that, but we've been convinced that, you know, that this mm -hmm. is Christianity, you know, going to church, having a nice service, you know, um, going out to eat, uh, gathering at home, um, you know, watching a Christian movie. I mean, we, we've created this picture which isn't biblical. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, one of my concerns is, if we don't go back to the biblical narrative and description mm. and prescription of what it means to be a believer and a disciple of Christ, that will fade in the minds of people. Most Christians mm. in their mind, by default, they don't have the image of what it yeah. is to be a disciple. And almost we yeah. have to go back for a radical paradigm mm. shift, uh, like a yeah. reformation to go back to basics. Who is a Christian? A Christian is someone who is a disciple and a disciple of Christ is one who has first and continues to deny themselves, making the master the priority, the thoughts, the ways, the will, the purposes of the master as a priority. It's not about going yeah. to church on a Sunday, ticking a box, you know, no. It's about laying yourself down.